Telepon, glad to see you, even online. So, and thank you for joining my presentation. It uh, will be introduction to the fast API from Django developer. Okay, so let's start about me. I have more than 10 years with Python. It's my main programming language, but also I worked with uh, different like, technologies uh, like uh, JavaScript uh, or C or Java and uh, many other of them. And uh, today we will discuss Python, this Python event and also we will discuss uh, something about uh, how am i used to work uh, what projects i worked on and uh, how did it uh, happen that uh, at one day i was unsatisfied with the way that i am used to work and uh, what uh, did i found so Actually, for last uh, six years, probably most of my projects were mid-sites, uh, web-driven, and uh, they were needed to fix some clients' uh, internal business need. Uh, then uh, there was no some high load. There was no. Uh, big data, uh, nothing uh, quite interesting, and uh, just regular projects. Really, like 80% of projects where I worked on were not uh, interesting from tech side. They were interesting just from business side. And uh, that meant uh, that uh, usually you don't need uh, something rapid to build projects. You need something uh, with a lot of features where you just start the project, you get as much third party libraries as you can, install them, integrate them to your project and start work. And you don't care about some dependencies, some um, stuff like background of your team when someone likes uh, uh, to write everything from scratch, someone likes to use libraries, you just uh, make some, take some standard, which was actually Django, and uh, build the standard project using standard tools. Uh, also, there was always um, limited uh, by client needs everything yesterday, and uh, uh, they were uh, REST API, like starting for the last five years, almost everybody uses REST API. So you just take a uh, JavaScript client, you download uh, and install Django REST render, start server, uh, dockerize everything, and it just works. So um, for 90% of uh, tasks, you take database model uh, and uh, write group on this model. You define Django uh, REST framework serializer, define uh, views based on those model, and uh, just use it. And uh, that's really, it works. Uh, but sometimes you need uh, some asynchronous tasks, uh, for example, basic of them, not asynchronous, let's say long running task, uh, like sending a mail. You can't uh, send a mail from uh, WSGI process just because it will block uh, one of your WSGI workers. So in uh, such cases, you add some QA. For example, Redis, Rabbit and Q, or just add Redis as a Q, and you start and distribute uh, some tasks to the worker. On the one hand, it really works. You add uh, some tasks. So, uh, for example, let's send a mail, you create tasks, send invitation a mail, 
then uh, when user sends API, which says, okay, I want to register, you create his data in database, then pass uh, his data to QA and uh, trigger some tasks. Okay, let's send him an invitation mail. Uh, and uh, for such kind of tasks, when uh, they are not, um, uh, they're not, let's say, critical, they can be done not in real time. It works very well. Actually, it works well for other kind of tasks, but you have uh, some uh, issues coming here. Like uh, if your task fails, it, you need to be sure that you retry it. Uh, user we can see that the task is successful as you can't wait uh, till the end of his task. You just uh, send this task to QA and waiting for result and return to user like, okay. You have um, response to 100, everything is okay, and uh, your registration started. Uh, so, uh, also, one day I met uh, some projects where it became hell uh, to work this way. But as I mentioned, uh, on the most of them, if you want to start project, just take Django REST framework, take Savory, take some Postgres or MySQL or any database that you need. Um, if you need uh, to make your API faster, just add a caching server, like Vanish, add award balancers like PyProxy, and you will be happy. I used to work on the project, uh, which was really high load. We had uh, 1 billion uh, requests uh, per month, and uh, we used the Django as our main backend server. So there we just built a set of uh, proxies, set of load balancers, uh, used write cache, validated it in the right way and it was pretty fast so uh, let's say that most of our users didn't uh, call our api they just looked through our cache and uh, got data from there and it was super fast and uh, super easy to develop as you don't even care about uh, your about the speed of your api as you can develop API with any speed and uh, because of caching system it will work so when you think that you need uh, something fast so it can be not your API but adding some caching layer so why did I need something new why what uh, issues did I match uh, that I decided to take something new to my project. Actually, I don't like to take something new. If you play video games, there is a game called XCOM. There is uh, a move system where you can make uh, a move and a task. So you can uh, say, like, use something you already have and uh, add something new during your move and if you add more than one new thing during your move it uh, usually usually it's not a good idea you will fail so i think the programming is like that if you try to add more than one new technology on your project uh, you will fail with a uh, high possibility of fail as um, your team will work on integrating two things, you don't know them, and uh, this uh, will turn to the hell. So uh, my suggestion is if you want to add something to your project, uh, be sure that you don't add more than one thing at the same time, and uh, be sure that you are ready and you understand why you need this thing. So if you start project and you are a Flask developer, just use Flask as uh, if you understand that it really worked with Flask and you think, okay, I, Flask is good enough, but 
um, if I use uh, IO HTTP or I use uh, any XYZ framework, it will work faster. Uh, then probably you don't need it as while it's good enough or you will not get uh, the issues uh, as you are expert in those areas you are working with. So what was uh, like wrong with Django first thing is uh, really Django was developed a long time ago when uh, now we talk about Django and I am Django developer. You never work with the Django as it was designed uh, from scratch. So I believe nobody uses uh, Django templates now for day-to-day -day tasks. Uh, now our world is more about RESTful APIs, not about templates rendering. Even when client uh, comes to you and you say, okay, we will do some templating with no javascript bind uh, he will look you like you are crazy and you definitely will use uh, some restful api or graphql api or any other kind of api so you will have front end and back end you will have or usually separate developers for back end and for your front end and um, you don't need to install Django REST framework. So actually nowadays, uh, Django is not about uh, Django itself with all its batteries and infrastructure, it's about Django REST framework. And uh, some batteries uh, are not developed for Django REST framework. If the Django REST framework is not a modern tool, for example, when you want to create open API documentation, you need to integrate third parties as Django has its internal and documentation uh, tool and it's uh, not open API, which is um, used widely. Of course, as it's Django, you can just uh, find something like Django REST framework dash open API and it will generate open API for you. That's really one thing uh, which I love in Django that if you need something, you just go okay, keep install Django dash uh, some technology and it will install for you well tested uh, library that is well integrated with your ecosystem. Um, okay, and uh, actually, the second. Uh, the second part is uh, that uh, I met a couple of microservices architectures, really microservices when, uh, for example, you have a client, so you have some client uh, which uh, calls some service, and then uh, this service needs to call some servers and this service takes data from a couple other services and after each you return uh, your response back client so when uh, you're working with vsgi so you block your connection here so it's minus one thread minus one thread here and then it's minus one thread here and minus one thread here and while we are doing this and this uh, here we can uh, suspend it and uh, just uh, work like and this server can just await here and uh, wait for this server to return his data and uh, execute other tasks uh, during this lag if you work with asynchronous framework while when you work with uh, savory so we have django client so you can organize it in some way like okay i put uh, this to query some query this task and then uh, this task is on my 
salary um, where I call another Django Flask or Django, it doesn't mean so another synchronous framework which will have its own query which will call and at this point actually at this point you already drop your client connection then you are not blocking your server but if your client uh, need to needs to get uh, answer uh, you can't uh, say okay i'm still working usually or you can say you just add some flag to database where you say my task is executing so for each uh, status call, you go to database and then you can add some web sockets through, for example, channels or some Redis implementation for web socket and uh, send data back. But uh, you can't do blocking calls, which is um, really good when you are trying to uh, integrate many sources. So I met a project. Uh, where we had uh, a lot of services uh, defined in uh, different languages, uh, in various languages. And uh, for example, some of them were uh, C sharp, some of them were on Python, some of them were in Java, and uh, all they communicated via REST. And uh, you so if it's Python service, you need uh, to put it to salary as we used Django and we met a lot of issues uh, regarding uh, tracking all this information. So that's actually was the main reason why some time ago I thought about uh, moving to some asynchronous framework and started uh, checking them. So after some research, I found that FastAPI is good enough. Actually, it wasn't a long research. I just found that it's good enough. And as you probably already understand, if I understand that uh, technology is good enough for me, I just start try and use it. And if I understand that it's really good enough, I don't look to other technology until I find some issue or something that's not uh, good for me so yeah go i still developed project with django and was quite happy so first of all why fast api is uh, better uh, it's really fast so if we go to some benchmarking sites uh, there you will find some benchmarking tool those guys did uh, checks so they uh, updated periodically so and uh, there as you can see fast api is uh, one of the top frameworks um, regarding their speed so that's uh, why it's really fast and you can use it also the second it's built upon uh, Starlet. Starlet is a asynchronous web framework, uh, pretty basic, which uh, was created by the creator of Django REST framework uh, and uh, who I respect. And um, it's uh, really took some um, basic uh, stuff from Django REST framework. And as I am used to work with Django REST framework, I choose first API. So if you are used to work with some other framework, you can choose other framework and uh, that can be better for you. Uh, then uh, first API is really easy to start. So some Hello Work API, Hello Work <coughs> API is uh, presented on the screen. You just uh, import typing and first API it's good as it's based in typing. So if you want to pass a query parameter item ID, you just create uh, your function read item, uh, pass that right item ID is read. It will add for you type checking for this item ID. You don't need to care about it. Uh, like 
you did in Django or in Flask, so that's good. And uh, also, if you want to add some optional query params, you do the same. You add optional parameter, which will be your query param. So you can then use like search item, search item ID, and Q is my search query. And uh, also out of the box, it provides for you Swagger UI. So you don't need to install additional tools. It will analyze all your dependency type, build for you Swagger UI, build for you Open API documentation, uh, take all the types that you defined within your project, and uh, just uh, create it for you. Take your doc streams and insert them to comments and uh, take everything for you. Also, it's uh, defined it to work with REST API and so you just work with uh, Python Dix, which will be connected or converted to JSON on the fly and uh, it will work for you. And then, uh, as I used to work with Django REST framework, and there is a serializer, Fast API provides, uh, like, let's say, the same thing. It's not quite the same, it's uh, a bit different uh, through Pydentix. So, when you want to add some validation for your model or add some um, um, ba basic calculations uh, between your model and your code, you just define a pedantic model where you say in Python way, like ID will be integer, nothing like uh, integer field uh, as you define in Django REST framework, which is which looks better, text is string, complete is bool, also based on type annotations, and it will uh, work for you if you want to add the default value, you add completed is false by default, and so on. And if you want to post something, you can define a response model, which will validate your response, which you return and convert it to new needed format. And uh, you can uh, define input model which will take uh, and validate user's input from your RESTful API. So then you just uh, do some uh, database and sort. For example, you take uh, nodes uh, from your SQL channel, make the insert, pass values, and uh, just executing those queries. Uh, also, the great feature is uh, dependency injections. Uh, they look uh, really great for me and I love it. I used to work with them in other frameworks. And that's cool. For example, you are trying to define some function, some API call, and you need to take requests in those API call. Then you just provide the parameter named request with type request. And it means uh, that to this variable, like this function argument, you will get uh, current request that was passed to the system and it's in, it will be done automatically. So you can name it not request, but any other way, but if you annotate it that it accepts requests, it will depend on the uh, current request to those variable. Also, you can uh, write your own dependencies and uh, use them, uh, for example, like this. Uh, when uh, somewhere in a function you add depends, you pass the my function common parameters. Here will be the common parameters that you defined. Also, you can define your own uh, classes so that will be the dependencies which you can inject on the fly and update the logic of your service. 
which is uh, quite easy to use and uh, uh, good from my side. So also it has a well working test client. If you used to work with some modern Python framework, it's uh, not a big deal for you, but uh, when you need to write some unit tests, you just import from your app uh, client, write client uh, dot get dot post, pass your data, and you can then do asserts and run your code without any issues, which is uh, a good feature as well. As uh, if you write in Python, uh, then usually you already have such in your favorite framework. But if you uh, are used to use not Python, then you don't have it for most of the frameworks. And uh, finally, let's discuss what wasn't uh, so good uh, in my experience with Post API which actually isn't quite big. I used it uh, on a couple of my recent projects, but I really fall in love with it. And I think that uh, if I have a chance to use it on my next projects, I will think about using FastAPI or even Django, which I used to use before. So first of all, uh, Sometime I worked a lot of on pre-sales, and uh, it can sound funny, but Django admin was a killer feature. So when you come to some business client and you say for him, uh, "Okay, we can develop your project," and he usually asks, "And will I have my own admin panel where I can?" check everything and when you are Django developer you say oh yeah it's already integrated in my framework and it makes clients so happy really and that uh, they say okay you have admin panel I just need Django I had such uh, this case discussion a couple of times in my life so it really worked uh, at least for a sales person who tries to sell something some technology to client just uh, say to him, okay, you will not spend money on uh, implementation of the admin panel. It will be done from scratch. So it will be done from your frame, our framework. And he says, cool, it's something free and people like to get something free. So they usually agree to use uh, Django this day. So, uh, Really, it's uh, something that I'm missing in any other framework uh, that uh, I'm using on a project. As usually, you need to uh, set up some admin panel, uh, write your code twice, once for your API, second time for your admin panel, and uh, start using it. Also, what I mean is class-based views. Uh, actually, I'm used uh, to use quite best view, based views as I find them uh, easy to use and giving uh, a lot of um, features through mixings and inheritance. Uh, while when you write in function style, you add uh, a ton of decorators like uh, decorators that checks uh, that you can access some function, decorator that checks uh, that you have right headers and your code looks like, okay, I have uh, and list nodes, here are my first decorator, second decorator, third decorator, and uh, one day it becomes uh, MS to read this. Also, while uh, when you use class-based view, you need uh, to define just, okay, I take such router at the such uh, URL, and then uh, use those model, or you even define URLs in other place. While uh, for the same guy, you need to define three functions, 
which will create lists, uh, also one function for update, which will be used for put and one function for uh, delete. And for each of this function, you will write pretty same code. So each of your list will look like, okay, take my model from database, uh, uh, select the data and uh, put those data on the user, revise it to, uh, put the data to the users, revise it uh, from model to JSON. And you will have a dozen of the same functions. Actually, one day I visited projects which was uh, written not using cost-based view and it was a mess of the same functions while inheritance and just rules. And uh, actually, on my recent project, I sold this with a couple hours of development and one meta class. So I created class based view for Fast API, which uh, generates uh, such functions. It's cool that when you are using Python, uh, you can generate functions from class. So I added uh, also. So I added. Uh, a class named API view, API view, which can be used in this way. So I pass the router, prefix, and model, probably a couple other params. Also, you can add the mixings. So I defined API view, which defined all these functions, and defined a meta class uh, that converts uh, a new class with uh, adding uh, all these functions to those class and passing them to the router, which passed to class. And uh, it took some time, but uh, everyone on our project, I believe, happy to use it, as I got uh, a couple of uh, very good um, feedbacks. Oh, they just uh, use it because I said that we will use class-based views, uh, which I will implement because I hate uh, to write the same function 10 times. I never uh, actually tried to check. So, and also what's uh, not good is uh, when, like not good, not something that I'm not used to do, is when you need to integrate some uh, package. For example, you integrate uh, mail service like SendGrid, which I done uh, recently on uh, Django. You just install, pip install something like Django dash SendGrid. Then you add one setting to your settings spy, and um, finally you get it working. And uh, that's what you like when you work with some not such feature reach and not such framework with so many batteries and not so standardized framework as Django. So when you work with any Python framework inside Django, you usually will it will take you more than two lines of code and one line in your requirements txt to get the things done. And also, I really, let's say not like I missed Django RAM on the one hand, uh, but uh, some people don't like Django RAM as I do. But even those people who are used to work with SQL Chemi uh, are not satisfied as when you start using uh, FastAPI. At one day in your head comes a great idea. Okay, now we can work with asynchronous database like asynchronous Postgres, for example. And uh, you say, okay, that's a great idea. Postgres has asynchronous mode and you can uh, call database asynchronously and uh, it just works. But uh, when you start implementing, you find that only SQL Kimi base uh, is working with um, async uh, messages. So you define your SQL Kimi models, which are not models in this case. You just define table, which is table and uh, accepts many parameters. 
and you can't work with uh, SQL Kimi like with ORM. You can uh, work with it as a query generator. So based on your models, you can uh, find it. Uh, yeah. So we take here our model nodes. Then we generate query insert pass their volumes. And uh, then we execute this query. So uh, at some time, you find that okay to edit a parameter in your model or add something, you need to uh, manually update uh, a big list of your queries and uh, almost everything that's working with your database. Um, unfortunately, I didn't find a solution like uh, some uh, SQL ORM which works with asynchronous code. Um, so, but I think uh, nowadays uh, it will appear pretty fast. Uh, so, next couple of months, I believe we will see new. ORM, which will work with asynchronous Postgres mode, or we will have some patches, and we again can work with uh, class based uh, ORMs, not with uh, query generators. So, uh, to finalize, uh, let's uh, think when uh, we can have a need uh, to use fast API not Django REST framework or your framework or your favorite synchronous um, framework. So first uh, point if okay you found that you need as something asynchronous then you can uh, start with IO HTTP or any other framework but based on my experience uh, it's like uh, writing with Flask, not with Django. I respect Flask lovers, but uh, usually when I come to project, which is green with Flask, uh, I can find the realization of uh, the half of standard Django library. And usually when people take Flask, they say, okay, we will use micro framework, but then uh, they start uh, developing their own framework. So that's uh, the issue with almost all micro frameworks on uh, mid, mid sites or big projects that you need uh, one day to implement a uh, new big framework and you finally get rid from your micro framework and you have so written big framework with many of issues that you need to fix yourself instead of uh, just using some big framework. But when your project is uh, small, you still can use any micro framework, uh, but uh, why not to use asynchronous framework? As asynchronous framework have uh, bigger advantages to synchronous framework, as it seems for me. Also, you need some time to do development, as if you take uh, Django, you just take batteries from Django, and uh, uh, to develop complex things uh, with uh, small framework you need to implement your own framework one day as i already mentioned so like we've implemented uh, class-based views in our project which are not as standard for fast api but uh, standard for our team and now when we have some issues or we need something new that we didn't develop before within those class-based views we need to re-implement them and uh, also your team should have expertise either in fast API or in project that you choose. It can not be fast API and or you need to have expertise in all other technologies that you are planning to use on this project as otherwise you will fail with high possibility just because you will solve some integration problems and some issues that you meet without um, the time to fix it and without knowledge how to overcome them in technologies that you are integrating with.
And also one more time point that I found good with Stepi on one uh, of recent projects. The client uh, wanted to switch to GraphQL and uh, it was quite easy to switch to GraphQL with FastAPI. You just uh, install Python Graphene, uh, which integrates uh, pretty well with FastAPI. So actually that's all from my side. Uh, probably someone have some questions and wanna ask them.